motorcycles are depreciating assets. However, the older ones, because they've already depreciated, you don't gotta worry about that. In this kind of condition, they're actually becoming more valuable because you don't find them in this condition. They're all beat to crap or just, just about ready to go in the junkyard by now, but not, not this one though. However, this one, it looks it looked like it would be fine. Oh, it's turnkey, but you get home, it's just the opposite of turnkey. <laughs> It's like a something. Anytime it's old and it's used, it's always a better deal. I'm your grandpa, man. I'm telling you, hey, pay in cash. If you can't pay in cash, you can't afford it, man. Some people won't agree with that, but if you can't pay in cash, can you really afford it? In my opinion, no. So it's a lot less than a new bike, right? So you're not having to finance it, which is which is nice in my opinion. And it's like 20 years old. That gives you more room for negotiations. Always get them on the phone, always. If you see, I ask them right here on the phone. Why do you want to do that? So I can get the real story, that's why. Because um, I know how this goes, man. 20 year old bike, man. You know, people don't really tell you the truth. And I've looked at more 06s than any other bike ever. I've never met one person with these old bikes that's just telling me the truth. Literally every single person ever is lying. That opens up room for negotiations, right? Because you're not financing and you're there to buy it and pay in full, you have the ball in your court. And I love that when it comes to old bikes because because they're cheaper, the guy that shows up with cash and can take it home that day is the guy that can negotiate, right? I was asking him just basic questions. Hey, I see that's an exhaust. Is that a full exhaust? Didn't know. Does it have a power commander? Not sure. This thing's a 2006, so I think we can both agree it needs a few things. You're telling me it doesn't need one thing? Of course it needs something, right? If I can tell you things about, hey, the tire's been replaced this time, um, it's got this exhaust on, I use this oil in it. If he can tell you all that, that's a little different. But you would be surprised. These old bikes, almost everyone's flipping. People flip these things all the time. Including this one. This guy had it for three months. The reason why I bought it was the condition. I was like, you know what? I don't even care what this guy's telling me. If you don't know one thing about it, That affects the price. I mean, the reason why people go to dealerships is because they can tell you, oh, I put, I put these tires on it, this bike was serviced, we did this, we did that, we did this, this bike's good to go. Matter of fact, if it's not, you can bring it in, you can bring it back in in a month or something like that, right? With this, it's none of that. Usually, if they're, you know, three hours from my house or more than two hours or whatever, I don't even leave my driveway until I have the paperwork and I've talked to them on the phone and know the real story, right? And you still don't know the real story from there because people lie all the time. It's hard to tell what is and what isn't true. Almost everybody's lying about these bikes. Usually there's something wrong with these bikes. Again, I've looked at a ton of 06s. Here's another one, same bike, same everything. The only thing is it's a 600. One of the first things I always ask them is how many owners has it had, right? He tells me, oh, I'm the second, but my cousin owned it. I'm like, ah, that's probably BS, right? That's what this guy told me. But I was like, oh, the condition's pretty good. So I was like more willing to listen to this guy. Yeah, then I got there to look at that bike, that 06. That was back in 2019. He's making it sound like it's perfect. I get there, the thing doesn't even run, right? It's shutting off. I'm like, oh, okay, what's that? I knew in the back of my mind, I'm like, that's probably the stator. That's what these bikes are known for, is frying stators. That's a, that's a common symptom right there, shutting off when it's warming up. It's a sign that the stator's probably starting to go. That's why I ask a ton of questions. You hit them in person. I only ask all the questions in person if they're like an hour away. So if they're more than an hour, I get them on the phone. Less than an hour, I go there and do my negotiating. Um, on the phone, I negotiate if you're far away. If you're not even in the ballpark that I want, I don't even go. Now this bike is 20 years old, so it's already done all its devaluing. It's not really going any lower than like six. The average price of this bike for like a decent one is right around like seven or six in the middle of that. So this bike really isn't gonna be going that much further down. Sure, I might lose a little because I have to put money into it, maintenance, all that stuff. You, you always lose a little, but I'm not losing a crazy amount from it devaluing. It's not going to really devalue much. Actually, the price of bikes are going crazy right now. So you're way less invested on something like this than any brand new motorcycle. You buy a new bike, you're losing, you're losing the most, you're spending the most, and you're losing the most every single time on a new bike. Even if it's a uh, newer, I'd still rather buy it used. If you ask me, the devalue aspect when it comes to older bikes, it's definitely worth it because you ain't losing a ton.
Now let's talk about old motorcycles and what everyone's freaked out about, and that is problems. Problems. Soon as I brought this bike home, and I asked the guy 15 times on the phone, is there something wrong with it? Is there something wrong with it? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? 15 times I asked the guy, oh, it runs fine. I went down the whole list of figuring out what was wrong with it. I did everything, went to the plugs, checked it, checked the coils, and just went down the whole list. Ended up being the fuel pump. I suspected it was the fuel pump, but I wasn't gonna assume anything because it was a bike that I really knew nothing about. And as I'm trying to fix that and go through all the plugs and everything, you hear this random like thud right there? I'm like, what the heck is that? That scared the heck out of me. I thought, oh my God, I just bought a piece of crap. Best case scenario. I found this Phillips head bit just sitting on top of the motor. It sounded like someone was like, like hitting a bat with a tank or something. I was like, what is that sound? Like that was like, I was like, I don't know what that is. That's like scaring me. Now I'm on to the next problem, getting under the suspension and doing all that. Any old motorcycle needs a lot of care. Riding an older motorcycle is definitely more dangerous than riding a newer bike. Not because of the technology stuff. I don't really believe in that, but you could argue, hey, it would be safer with, you know, with rider aids and safety modes and all that stuff. And what I'm more talking about is if you have any problems with the front end, like it's making any noise, it's pulling one way, the tires are messed up or something. Pretty much what I'm saying is everything has to be mechanically sound, especially in the front end. If something's wrong with the front end, I mean, that's how you control the bike. Huge, huge deal. Or if something goes unnoticed, that could lead to a crash making these old bikes a lot more risky, right? If you hear any weird sounds or it's not breaking like it should or something's going on where it just doesn't feel right, forget about the money at that point. Go take it in, get it fixed, get it, get, have someone that knows what they're doing. Look it over. You don't want it to end up seriously costing you because you wanted to save a little bit of money, right? So yes, you can save money, but spend money when it comes to making the bike mechanically sound. There's so much that you can learn literally since I brought this bike home. I've been on the internet researching and coming out here and figuring out different problems. Like I mentioned, I fixed the fuel pump. I was going down the list, learning, constant learning, constant learning, one thing, next thing, one thing, next thing. Everyone I see with these bikes, they're like project bikes in the garage, and I love that. That opens up the door for learning. So, like I said, if you're willing to take that stuff on, some people are, some people aren't. If you're one of those people, you know, you just kind of want to ride it, I get that. You don't want to mess with your bike, you just kind of want to ride it and have it good to go. I would never tell you to buy brand new, but what I would tell you to do is buy newer, because newer bikes have less problems than older bikes, right? If you can figure out the solution to your problems, right, then you end up learning stuff. That requires a lot of research, too. Research. So before I even got near this thing, I did a ton of research. I knew just going into it with these 20 year old bikes, man, they need everything. So if you're not willing to do that and solve those problems yourself, in my opinion, it ends up being a money pit and you're gonna keep dumping money, keep dumping money. Again, I got this because of the price and I wanted to learn, right? And it's also fast and just a bang for your buck. I mean, there's so much you gotta learn when it comes to old stuff. One of my friends has an 09 C300 with 170,000 miles. Oh my goodness, it literally needs everything. The suspension, wheel bearings, front diff bearings, rear diff bearings, transfer case bearings, you name it, it needs it. And that's how these old bikes are, man. They just eventually, when they get this old, nobody wants to drop all that money into it and they're not willing to do it themselves. So what they do is they just sell it to the next guy and they either do it or they are like nope i'm selling it same same type of thing if you're committed to it and you're willing to do everything in your garage man great investment great learning experience if you're not willing to do that horrible investment and complete disaster so this next thing i'm going to talk about i really like about older bikes and that is lack of technology yes you heard that right lack of technology the people that buy these bikes like me i was in the market for a leader bike i don't want my bike to be held back by traction control, wheelie control, all that nonsense I don't want. No, I want the bike to be unlocked. Just me, the throttle, and some brakes. That's all I need, right? I don't need all that other stuff because that, all, that holds the bike back. And the people actually wanting to ride these bikes, they do not want any rider aids or anything on this bike, right? They want it completely unlocked. Actually, I had a friend, I had a friend that had a BMW and he said the same thing. He's like, I gotta take it to the shop to put it in slick mode or whatever mode it is to unlock everything 
he had all those modes and he wanted it to essentially ride like this no rider aids no holding back nothing and what really sucks is that technology adds to the price of the bike so like if you look at the price of this bike new it's like 11 grand 10999 right eleven thousand dollars you go look at newer leader bikes this new is like 18.6 but out the door it's going to be like 20. so all these newer leader bikes are like starting at 20 grand out the door i grew up on a two-stroke so this thing is advanced to me i'm like oh this thing's crazy <laughs> Shifting is the best brake, man. So, about the technology thing, right? I was just watching a video, literally last night. I watched it again. Now, I ride this bike just as a street bike. So, the technology that comes with the newer leader bikes doesn't really do me any good. Now, that being said, if you were on a track, I could see how, hey, maybe that would help you out. Like, if you were taking off, you probably wouldn't want your bike doing a wheelie. That's going to slow you down. So, like, wheelie control, ABS, and stuff like that on a track... Like all those electronics on a track could benefit you, but I don't even go to the track. I only ride this as a street bike, so it doesn't really benefit me at all. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen this video by now. I was watching this video again last night. The guy's riding a K5 Gixxer, and he's going against a newer Ducati. I think it's a Penangali or whatever it is. And it's basically a newer motorcycle versus an older motorcycle. The old one, which would be this bike, has zero technology and the Ducati has a lot more technology and all those electronics and it actually loses by over a second to the K5 Gixxer. And not only is that bike a K5, but that bike also has like 60,000 miles or 50,000 miles, something like that. And he said during the video the gauge cluster wasn't even working so it might even have more than 50k they even swapped riders to make sure that it wasn't just a better rider on the k5 and still the ducati lost some old beat up jixer can can beat a modern ducati that's pretty wild so if you're riding it as a street bike in my opinion the technology is a con but if you take it on the track hey you could argue that's a pro even though that k5 jixer did beat that Ducati and also it makes these bikes easy to work on because you don't have all that technology on there I literally watched a guy on TikTok he was working on a BMW I think it was his BMW he said it took him an hour and a half or an hour or something like that just to take off the air filter I can get to the air filter on this bike in like seven minutes or less the lack of technology makes this bike a simple machine and it kind of goes back into that learning thing I was talking about. If you want to learn and you want to actually have a bike that's pretty easy to work on and it's, you know, you can actually work on it in your garage, this is the bike for you because it's a very simple machine, which makes me really appreciate today. I, I actually appreciate this a lot. So that aspect makes it a lot easier on someone like me because I actually work on the bikes. Like this bike, when I first got it, it was having trouble warming up. And I was like, I, I know those bikes have uh, idle screws. So most people don't know this. This bike actually has two idle speed adjustments. Something simple like that, you know. If you had like a more modern bike and it wasn't idling, it's a bigger deal because then you got to go on the computer, do all that stuff. Even with my 2015, I can't just adjust the idle like I can on this. But personally, I like that. I love how everything is easy to work on. Like the throttle position is manual. I got to adjust that. Got to adjust the idle. And just everything is so simple on this. A lot of people hate on these bikes, but a lot of people don't work on these bikes. When you go to work on them, then you'll learn to love them because the engineering on this bike is excellent. For example, when you go to put back in the fuel pump, when you put it back in, 
The holes literally won't line up. You can only put it on one way. This only goes on one way. So you literally can't put this on wrong. So it makes it nice. So you literally can install it wrong. That's kind of what I mean. There's a ton of information out there on these bikes. Last night, I was just watching somebody redo the steering stem bearings. I've seen somebody rebuild the transmission completely on this bike. You can go online and see how to drop an engine on this bike. With a bike like this, you pretty much know almost everything that can go wrong with it. For example, one of the problems with this bike is the frame. There was a recall on that frame in 2009. Now that was quite some time ago, right? But that's kind of what I mean is as time goes on, they figure out the problems with these motorcycles. And sometimes they recall them, sometimes they don't. On the older 600s, there's some issues they don't recall regarding electrical issues. But when it comes to old bikes, there's a ton of information out there. So if you do have problems, which you will with an old bike, there's a good chance that someone else already had that problem and they can help you solve it. The thing with old bikes is it's not so much the motor. The motor usually is fine. You really have to do something wrong to break these things. Mechanical parts like bearings, all that stuff you have to think about with the bike. If that scares you, older bikes aren't for you. If you can solve problems and you're willing to learn, I think an older bike is great to, to actually own because you'll learn so much more owning an older bike than a brand new bike. So yeah, I think it's worth it to own an older bike. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's not worth it? 